Hey there. So how do I earn money in my life, right? I go to work. I go to office. I do some contracted work that's uh, written in my contract. So that's what makes it a contract, right? Uh, one month passes and I get paid. And then I invest this money uh, into paying for the mor mortgage uh, from my house, uh, for, for my apartment, uh, for my car. Um, I buy some toys for myself and uh, basically that's what uh, makes life going, right? It's, uh, it's kind of a never-ending story. And all of us here on this channel and in this community enjoy free software. And, I, when, s and when I say free, I mean uh, free as in freedom, right? We all know that. So why the title of this video? Why do I think that we should pay for free software? I mean, it's pretty clear. Um, if you want software developers to make a great product, you have to make it sustainable for them. If you want them to make hobby projects, then of course you don't need to pay uh, and most of them if not all of them will ever make you or ask you to pay for their software so this is how things are rolling right sometimes we have some better uh, projects going but usually those better projects are backed up uh, by some companies with money and some sort of investment i'm not going to point any fingers in this video but the distinction between funded projects and completely uh, indie projects or let's call them unfunded because that's what what they are uh, is quite different quite quite visible in quality there are some amazing projects but usually those projects are somewhat funded so for example if you take uh, libreoffice how do you think they survive i think um, not not think, I mean, I know that they have a team of more than one programmer working on that software. So how does this organization function? I mean, you know the answer, but I'm just making you think. So how does uh, Mozilla Firefox work? How does Mozilla Thunderbird work? Thunderbird is actually an amazing uh, example of project which is completely open source and free and most of us uh, have been using it for many many years uh, on on windows on uh, linux it's a quality project right but how does it function how does it work how does it survive we donate we actually buy it we, we pay for that software and that's how they function that's how they, they work uh, and it's a quality project when I made some other videos, uh, people have replied to me about the absence of some software that they use, that they need. For example, they, they mentioned some DJ software, they mentioned uh, the image manipulation software like Photoshop and other examples. And basically it comes down to people are used to software that works well for them and switching to something that's less in their eyes makes it non-switcher for the operating system. I searched on the internet uh, for some DJ software and I actually discovered that uh, we uh, in the Linux and open source community actually have some really good DJ software, but uh, I'm not a DJ, so I cannot uh, really tell if that software is really good or not good. So when I recommended it to the person who was in my comments, uh, I haven't heard back, so I imagine uh, that they either are not at all interested in thinking about Linux uh, or they didn't find the software uh, to be good enough or maybe they found it to be good enough and then they shut up and never talked about it again. I, I don't know. But the main thing that I wanted to say if, uh, is if you want to make it sustainable for these uh, open source pro programmers, free software programmers, to make a living out of the software that we or you really enjoy, I think we should all pay. Like, straight up buy software. I mean, most of these programmers have some sort of donation hooked up to their program or to their web page, so that's uh, pretty much what it is. I think it should 
enter uh, our bloodstream in a way of of this open source community that uh, free software should be paid for. Obviously, you can't all uh, afford paying for software, and that's perfectly fine. But in in the great balance of things, I think uh, we should pay as much as we can. And I'm not saying like give your last coin. I, I'm just saying that if you can uh, afford something for I don't know one euro or dollar per month and not even blink about it, and this this is me talking about some software that you are really enjoying. I mean, why not? I'm literally asking you why not invest in your favorite software for just one dollar uh, or euro per uh, month, right? If you do that, if I do that, and if all of them do that, I think this developer is going to have a solid cash on their hands to completely focus on this product and make it as best as possible and maybe even drop their um, day job because most of us have standard day job who we rely on and which is taking our priority and if any of the members of open source community makes anything it's usually in their free time and as a hobby so there is always some sort of discrepancy in quality because the time invested in uh, making software is really making a difference. I, I don't think I said anything truly smart here, but I did want to make it uh, a bit um, closer, clearer, and le- like a refresher to all of us that I think we should pay for software. And th- there was one other thing that I was... Um, rolling in my brain before I started uh, recording this video and that's developers who make invisible software and by invisible I mean let's say that you are a developer who made some library some tiny library that is only useful to other developers and not to end users so end users will never see your project because it's not an end user project right but it's something that all other and user facing developers will utilize in their application and they will give you a credit you know when you go to to about page or something similar there there will always be your name and the name of your project that is being used uh, in this application but if you pay for this end user uh, free software application uh, because you want to reward uh, the maker how is the money going to end up in the hands of the first developer who made this library that made this software possible? So this is a bit complicated one and I was thinking that maybe the developer who made end user facing software could donate money to the author of the library whose software he or she used. That's I think certainly one of the ways to do it. Uh, Maybe some bigger organization uh, could pick up some slack and round up, I mean, open source developers and pay them equally uh, or according to how much effort they put in. Now, this is getting a bit complicated and totally out out of the scope of this video. But the gist of what I wanted to say is that I think we should start considering this topic uh, a little bit more often. And yes, I am aware that there is another YouTube video uh, about the very same topic uh, rolling around right now. But this topic was on my to-do list for months uh, and I feel kind of bad for not talking about it earlier. So, you know, the other YouTube uh, kind of reminded me that I want to get this out uh, and I'm very much looking forward to reading your comments on this topic. 